The challenge for providing effective professional development is to present new ideas while also modeling excellent pedagogy so that teachers will hopefully look at what I'm doing and remark, wow, he is a good teacher. I want to be more like him. It's a simple concept, but tough to successfully execute because you have to actually be a good teacher. There is no way to fake that. Additionally, my modeling works well because it requires collaboration. I built in time for the teachers to talk to each other about what they were experiencing. Allowing teachers a few minutes after each modeled lesson to chat with a peer and process the information can be critical for buy-in. It gives the participants a chance to teach each other what they think was useful and important, instead of always hearing from the lecturer. It works the same way in the classroom. It's always good to allow students a chance to teach each other their version of the content. In fact, this participant collaboration might be the best strategy for dealing with a difficult audience. Let's say that half the teachers in the room are willfully not interested in the content being presented during the professional development session I am leading, which is not unusual during a mandatory session. After I model a lesson, I can put them in groups to discuss. The hope would be that at least one teacher in every group would have been engaged by the strategy, and now it's their turn to repackage and pitch the merits of the content to their peers. This simple strategy takes some of the pressure off me as a presenter. I always know that the participants will be encouraged to interact with the content from a number of angles, not just me telling them what to think. Teachers were generally more excited about my modeling-based professional development sessions. More people came up at the end and said thank you. More came up and exclaimed that the time went by very quickly because they were constantly doing activities. More teachers ended up using the strategies back in their classrooms. Strangely, although most participants said they really liked it, the feedback on the session evaluations was actually worse than when I would just lecture about the content. When I would lecture during training sessions, the session evaluation feedback was consistent. Most teachers would write generic and positive responses like, the session was good, or the presenter did a fine job. This was because they were used to this delivery method. It's what they experience all the time. However, now I was changing it up. I was requiring them to get up and move. I was requiring them to think, collaborate, and share. I was not allowing them to sit and do other work. While most teachers were over the moon excited about being active in their learning, a few in every group were downright angry. So while my positive feedback remained extremely positive, my negative feedback was more extreme. I even had one teacher write in the session evaluation, stop wasting our time trying to engage us. Just tell us what we need to know and leave. I found that this was very similar to what can happen in the classroom. Students have experienced so many passive, lecture-based learning environments and have learned how to function in them that being active is a shock to the system. It's like I was changing the game on these students. They had figured out the system. They pretend to pay attention, they do the minimum required, they leave. Well, not anymore. Change affects people differently. Some got angry. Overall, my conclusion was that creating an active learning environment during professional development was not only more effective, but also most learners seemed to appreciate it. This is not surprising, but it's noteworthy because it was the first time I really thought of professional development sessions and training as just another classroom where the principles of what I considered to be good teaching resulted in benefits for learners.